Hi guys, we're back for our weekly recap. Alex Dunn, and you can tell it's a special occasion. I have my niece, nice ski top on. My coach, Mike Budnick, is in from Florida, uh, and he's going to be with us on our recap today. So, uh, what I'm going to do is go over real briefly some talking points about the week so we all get those in our head. And then, since Mike's here, I'm going to yield the floor to my coach and he can show us what good jiu jitsu looks like. So, let's talk about a couple things from the week. Well, this week was all about escaping the mount. And one of the talking points that we forget most of the time when we're doing our mount escapes is how important this structure can be. And I see arms going everywhere. I need to build this skeletal structural support right across his belt line so that he's not pressuring me. The next mistake I see as we move towards our escape sequences, particularly our elbow knee escape sequences, is people just try and turn on their side underneath their partner while all of that pressure is on top of them and it makes it very difficult. This is one of those things that our fundamental warm-ups are so important. We bump and shrimp in that order for a reason, because I bump to create space, and then I'm going to shrimp into that space. And look how much easier it is for me to turn on my side. From here, it's just a short adjustment. Don't forget that little bit of adjustment to get further on my side. And now I can start my elbow knee escape. Foot goes flat to the mat. I'm using this frame to support his weight and set my knee elbow up. And then I'm bringing my knee up, and I'm using my elbow to just post down. I'm not actually shoving his leg, I'm just posting it down. As soon as this clears, I see a lot of people in a scramble here. And it's because they're missing a couple vital steps. First, this leg, my hamstring sets right in front of his knee, not on the mat. If my leg is on the mat, he slides right over and I've got problems again. Right here, I'm preventing that knee slide. My leg that's in between steps over, and now I prevent the back step. So if Don tries to escape from here, I've already got something in place to contain his movement. From here, while I'm maintaining my pressure here, my connection here, I'm going to start my shrimps. One, two, and I bring in my underhook already, and three, all the way to my side. And now I can set my half guard, and we're into our instructional sequence, sequence from a couple weeks ago. So, we did a lot of things with that this week, but that's the core of it. Bump. Shrimp, adjust, fundamentals in that order. So, with that said, I'm going to capitalize since we got Mike in town, coach coming up, uh, and I'm going to let him walk through one of his specialties. Uh, well, we got him, we're very lucky to have him here. Thanks for coming in, sir. Thanks for having me, I appreciate it. Um, for me personally, one, one of the things I really, really focus on is uh, positional dominance. My, my main objective when rolling, when competing, when I'm trying to defend myself is, is establishing dominant position. Um, I talk a lot about the positional ladder and working my way from the worst possible position I could be in, always working my way up. Um, you know, in all my years in Jiu-Jitsu, if I had a dollar for every time I heard the term position before submission, I'd probably be able to buy myself a <coughs> steak dinner. Uh, you hear it all the time, and you know, as silly as it is, it's true. Jiu-Jitsu is all about improving position. Um, that being said, if, there, if I have the opportunity of going from uh, kind of a, a bottom of the rung, bottom of the ladder type position to almost the top of the ladder in one movement, I want to take advantage of that. I don't want to have to do as much work as possible. Um, as I'm doing that, as I'm improving position, my mind is never on submissions. I'm never out there chasing submissions. I'm never trying to yank arms out of place or do anything like that. My, my, Again, my main objective is just improving position. And what tends to happen is, as you're improving position, people become desperate and they start to panic. As, as you're there losing position and you're gaining position, people tend to start using their arms uh, inappropriately. They start rolling their head in places they shouldn't put it. Uh, and then the submissions become easy. So uh, with that focus, with, with uh, positional dominance, dominance and just improving position, um, one of my favorite positions to work from is bottom side control. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show two related techniques from bottom side control that uh, allow me to really reverse position. Um, so, starting in bottom side control here. Um, one of the things I really like to do in Jiu Jitsu is kind of the unexpected. In this position, when he's on top of me, he's expecting me to create space and shrimp and try to look to get my legs inside here. Um, one thing a lot of people are not looking for is me to create space and roll that way and bring my arm underneath here. So from this position, when I start to do this, he's almost instinctively gonna push back towards me, and as soon as I clear this arm, I'm free and clear. Very important point, as soon as I come through, control this wrist right here. Um, if he starts attacking with his hand, starts looking to go to that far collar from underneath or whatever, I'm okay right there. He, 
he's, he's going to be aiding me in my escape. Um, so anyway, from this position, and another thing is, I, I, have, a, I have a love for the self-defense aspect of jiu-jitsu. So when I'm doing techniques, regardless of what I'm training for, if I have a, a competition coming up, if I have a fight coming up, um, I've built my jiu-jitsu around the, the fundamental core of self-defense jiu-jitsu. So it's important to me that when I'm doing a technique, uh, that the technique would allow me to use it in a self-defense situation. That, that means if somebody who's bigger and stronger than me was on top of me, if somebody was trying to punch me, or or even worse, I mean, in a real-life self-defense self situation, I'm not afraid of getting hit. It's the other things. It's somebody getting their fingers into my eyes or, or something like that. So I really want to be able to, to eliminate that. And when I get to this position here, and I create space and I come this way, uh, this is the hand that he can really get to my face with right now. This is the hand he's going to be using to try to control me. If he starts using this to try to, to punch me or, or do anything else, uh, the escape becomes very, very easy. So, working from this position here, when I'm here, nice and tight and controlling this arm, I'm going to bring my knee up so uh, he, can make, he can't step over to mount very easily. Uh, from this position, he has two options. He can either stay how he is right now, where he's kind of still on top of me, or he can kind of lean back and try to pull me back in this direction. That gives me two options. If he's staying on top of me here, I'm gonna take my bicep to his ear this way. So from here, release the wrist, bicep to the ear, and then I'm gonna run my feet out and get my hips up high. And take him straight to the back. And again, you can see I finish this position where I go from bottom side control to not only top side control, but the top north south with my arm around his neck, which again, Talk about improving position. A second ago, I was in one of the worst positions you could possibly be in. And now I'm in a position, not only where I'm in a dominant position, but I'm in a, a pretty good position to finish. So one more time with that. I'm here, I create space. He starts to push back towards me. I come through and I control the wrist. My hand's always ready to protect myself. He's staying on top of me. He's not trying to pull me back. From this position, I take my bicep to his ear, run my hips out, hips go up high, pull the head down. Easy turn to the north south. And if I want him to finish here, it's, it's there. So that's option A. I roll through, I control the wrist, and he's, he's allowing me to stay in that position. The second one is, same exact scenario, I'm here, create space, I roll through, I grab the wrist. The second I feel him leaning back towards his feet, instead of taking the bicep to the ear, I'm gonna take the tricep to the ear, and look to grab the belt right back here. Uh, structure is important here. I don't want to allow him to drive me to the ground and, and arm triangle me in this position here. So when I'm here, as long as I stay heavy with good structure on top of his neck, if he tries to arm triangle me, there's nothing there. Uh, the beauty of this position, every single person who's in his, his situation here will look to start trying to take my back. He's going to start going that way, which gives me space to get my foot hooked inside his leg right here. As soon as I establish the hook here, my weight goes towards his head, and my foot goes up in the air. And I follow straight over top, and finish in again, top side control. One more time. I create space, I come through, control that wrist and protect myself. I feel him immediately pulling me back, my tricep goes to the ear, I sit up, and I grab the belt. In Jiu Jitsu, it's great that I have a belt in a self defense situation. I'd be grabbing a jacket, pants, whatever. In a Noki situation, I just put my hand on his back and make sure I'm keeping, again, structure and weight on top of his head here. As he looks to create space and try to take my back, I establish my hook inside. As soon as the hook hits, weight on the head, foot goes towards the ceiling, sit through, and again, I'm finishing in a, a dominant position. So again, from a couple of little tips with that, with the, with the starting point there, bottom side control, he feels very comfortable. He feels like he's got the, the huge advantage, and the reality is he does. He's, a, he's in a dominant position there. Um, I like doing the unexpected. I like doing things that they're not used to feeling. And when you're rolling with somebody at Alex's level, when you're training with somebody who's been training as long as he has and, and is so proficient in jiu-jitsu, he's felt those shrimping mo movements and, and creating space million times. So as soon as you do that, it's just reaction, reaction, reaction. Um, when you go in an opposite direction, you give him a little bit of a different feel, uh, the muscle memory is not there. He's never felt it before. So he has to think through it. And when people are thinking through things, everything slows down. It gives me the time that I need to, to execute my techniques and escape. So when I go to the other side, it's unexpected. 
If he stays on top, again, bicep to the ear. If he pulls me back, tricep to the ear. And again, as you finish these techniques, uh, the te techniques don't end with the sweep. As soon as you establish dominant position, lock everything out. One of Alex's specialties is uh, that, that dominating control from top side control. And uh, when I practice these sweeps or when I teach these sweeps, I, I don't have a start here, finish here type thing. When you're doing these sweeps, the sweeps don't finish until you are in a complete controlled dominant position. And uh, you know, it's just a fun technique for me. Awesome. And having felt those techniques, uh, I can say they are truly amazing. Thank you very much. Uh, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for checking it out. Uh, mad props to Coach Budnick, Mike Budnick, a uh, good friend of mine. Man, I got my black belt from. If I have a good top side game, it's because of this man right here. So uh, thank, you. thank you publicly. So uh, uh, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, check out, subscribe down below, and uh, follow our recaps weekly. We're always going to have something coming out. Uh, so until next week, Coach, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Glad you made it up. We'll see you.